This might seem to you like an ordinary story. You might even think that stories are boring. But this is not like other stories, no. This is a warning, a tale of caution that is rather strange and sort of rather gory. It begins with a little boy whose name was Gus, which is actually short for asparagus. He was one of those kids who always made a fuss and stood out for thinking he was tough. See, Gus was always getting told off for this or that or which or what, for starting scuffs and playing rough. He never listened when Miss said, Enough is enough! <clears throat> He'd just open his mouth and shout, Shut up! Teachers didn't scare him, nor did the rules. He thought he was in charge, boss of the school. He gave it the big un and thought it looked cool to make little kids tremor and squish big kids small. And there was one thing that Gus always did without care. Something that someone like you wouldn't dare. Something quite naughty for which Gus had a flair. The little boy was an expert at leaning back in his chair. I've told you once and I've told you twice. It is not funny and it is not nice. Now once again, surprise, surprise. I tell you, Gus, this one last time. Stop leaning back on your chair. Stop leaning back on your chair. Stop leaning back on your chair. I don't care, I don't care. I do what I want, so there. You can't stop me, man, man, man. I will always, always lean back on my chair. <laughs> and dinner at home with his dad and his gran never seemed to go to any sort of plan. Gus would spit venom like hot oil from a pan and lean back on his chair with a bang, bang, bang. Stop leaning back on your chair. Stop leaning back on your chair. Stop leaning back on your chair. I don't care, I don't care, I do what I want, so there, you can't stop me, na na na. I will always, always lean back on my chair. <coughs> One of these days you'll crack your head, and Gus, you'll be a sorry boy then. Where hair once grew shall be stitches instead. You're lucky, dear, if you don't end up Lead. Just imagine cracking your head at school. If you must wear a scar, then let it be for something cool, like saving a cute dog or a bungee jump fall. Not by doing something stupid, not by acting the fool. Whatever. You aren't immortal, you're just a human being. You have just one brain that holds all of your feelings, all of your secrets, ideas, and meanings. Your brain is your home, and your skull is the ceiling. And nobody wants a crack in their ceiling, do they? I don't care. I don't care, I do what I want, so there, you can't stop me, na, na, na. I will always, always lean back on my... Well, just you remember.
remember asparagus, dear. Your brain is more precious than a lean on a chair. Life can surprise you as quick as a spear and swap rainbows with storm clouds and happiness with tears. You're not a bad boy, Gus. This isn't you. I know you get upset and angry sometimes. I do too. But there's no need to lash out and do the things you do. It's okay to just be you, you know. You have nothing to prove. You don't know anything, you old boot. But did Gus listen? No. 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 Do you think Gus listened? No. Sorry, what, what was that? dotted the street like a trail of red crumbs and splashed the soles of shoes like chewed up spat out gum. The kids in class were frightened, crying, Daddy! Mum! There's a kid at school whose head today exploded like a bomb! And grey brain bits went everywhere like rancid sausage meat. And all this gun snot stuff slopped blobs on our feet. And there on was screaming, screaming. And his so his bone, bone crumbled like wheat, all because, all because Gus couldn't, couldn't sit, sit straight, straight up on his seat. seat. Now you might be thinking, whatever, no big deal, YOLO. It's all right, isn't it? It's just a crack on the head, and if you're not dead, then fine. It's just a bit of blood, you know. The scab will heal with time, but no, no. A crack from leaning back doesn't just change your head. It can also change your mind. Just a crack, just a crack. From the front down to the back, just a crack. Fancy that from leaning a little too far back. Just a crack, a whack a splat splat. All gunge and blood and brain head fat. A crack, a crack, a crack. The crack then soon became a gap. That you could not hide with a backwards cap or even lovely crisscross plaits. A crack that you could not stick back. A crack. A crack. A crack. Mm. Now it's wrong. It's going bad. Now his mind is going mad. Flooding like a broken tap that wouldn't stop dripping. Splat! 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 Spilling out thoughts like mice from traps, a washing ocean bleeds the map. There was no chance for Gus to look back and say, I really wish I did not do that. Out went 
Gus's dreams. Out went his feelings, drifting like smoke into the pockets of the ceiling. All that he understood, all this knowledge and meaning, was now in the open air, where everyone could see them. The doctor was not best pleased. This is the silliest thing that I have ever seen. Your brain's all springing out like a pack of jumping jelly beans. And what are we to do with your empty skull now, eh? Fill it up with strawberry jam and buttercream. <laughs> You'll be lucky if you can think again, laddie, let alone dream. You are playing the fool, boy, putting on a show. But now, close the curtains and don't answer the phone. It's the summer holidays, but he'll have to stay at home. Because this boy has a nasty case of Naughty boy syndrome. Can everybody stop telling me off? I'm the innocent victim here. I was involved in a terrible, traumatic accident. Accident, smacksident. This is all your fault, and it's going to be painful. We're going to stitch you up with a thread and needle. Now, sit still, won't you? Uh, this doctor was evil. And the pain was dreadful. <clears throat> now you're lucky we got to you before all your brain fell out. You see, thoughts are important things that you shouldn't just have floating about. Oh, look, there's one of your ideas here, spattered on my blouse. Looks a bit like sad scrambled egg. Oh dear, the poor child's passed out. <laughs> now here little Gus lies in his sick bed, spoon fed, comic red, a bandage on his head, his brain a cocoon mummified to death, full of sadness, full with ache, and plenty of regret. Gus couldn't even lift his head to sniff his cheesy toes. Gus couldn't even bend his neck to wave his grand hello, stuck in the swallow of his polka dot pillow. 
until something came that night in the darkness at the window. Hello? Who's there? Hello? Gus calls out into the swollen night. His tiny voice echoed and gave him a fright. The moon was a smiling coin, a face shining bright. But something did not feel normal. No, something wasn't right. Who's out there? Who are you? Show yourself to me. But all Gus received was the rattle of the breeze, the humming of the leaves and the chatter of the trees, the sound of silence in a way that shook the leaves. No, must have been a nightmare from eating too much cheese. There was one recurring fear that appeared in Gus's dreams. One that made him wake wet from sweat and stick to panic sheets. It was the face of the grave digger that he could not unsee. That day his world fell apart and washed out to sea. Could it be him now? The maggot man to take him from his bed, to drag him from his cozy home, to live with the insect. And then suddenly it hit him, smack, right there on the head. Did Gus survive his fall at all? Or was he well and truly dead? No, no, this was real. It's just that Gus had lost all of his memories, his dreams he'd now forgot, his ideas and knowledge out into the air to rot. All that he'd uncover once he recovered from the shock. Gus hid into the den of his bed, curled up like a prawn. He was overtired, wired, and gave a giant yawn. Just you wait! Grandma! Come quick! There's some kind of intruder in my room! I'm going to turn the light on. Then I'll get you. Gus's heart drumming with a pound, pound, pound as he called for the sound, but the sound could not be found. In one brave swoop, Gus leapt from the ground and switches on the light, but then the lights put out! And darkness. What are you? Some kind of weird ghost? 
can hear your wings. Are you an evil spirit? An angel. Oh, are you the spirit of my neighbour's dead budgie, Gareth? What are you? This is your little friend. This is your light. This is your compass, your guardian, your guide. These are your borrowed wings that nestle by your side. This is Gus, your very own brain's butterfly. You what? <sighs> she lives in your head, remembers everything you do. Your dreams she collects, and secrets she keeps too. If you're afraid, she protects you, lights up when you're blue. She's brave when you forget to be. She takes care of you. I know you think you're all grown up, but you are still a child. In between the streams of what is dark and what is bright, the sun rays of the day and the shadows of the night. See, some things you do wrong, Gus, are some things you can't put right. Emotions are full of colors. Humans are, are made of shades. Your butterfly flourishes when you do, but cowers when you misbehave. And sometimes, when you feel happy, she lights up like a parade. sad, or angry, or bad, she turns grey and shies away, just like she is today. You made a crack inside your head, and that's how she got out. Quick, quick, catch her before she can't be found. Hey! Hey! Butterfly flew to the windowsill and teetered on the edge, her little wings rustling as she fled from the window's ledge. Wait! Hey! Hey, wait! The whole world was a blanket miles from Gus's bed. But to his surprise, he closed his eyes, took a deep breath, and... I can't fly. I don't have wings. I can't just... Out of the bedroom window, 
the pair up and fly. Swoop silver hoops, loop into the night sky, past popcorn clouds. The twinkling stars shine bright in the night air. The planets magnify. And imagine, what a funny sight to go and pass you by. A boy in his pajamas and his brain butterfly. The first stop was a crumbling ancient hole, stuffed in the depths where the moles might go. It was gritty and dirty and brown and old. It was muddy and stinky and damp and cold. Oh. What are we doing here? There were dinosaur bones, rotten missing teeth, foreign objects buried down underneath where dusty books go and rusty hooks creak, tangled in a fog which made your nose sneeze. <laughs> And lost in all of that were Gus's memories. It stinks down here. Hey, I know you think I lost all my memories when I cracked my head or whatever, but yeah, sure, that's not ideal. But do I even really need my memories back? I think I'll be okay without them. Don't you want to remember when you were five? when you turned cardboard boxes into places to hide, or when your birthday is, or what food you like. Well, dig deep, Gus. See what you can find. Yuck. I much preferred the flying bit. As a heartbeat or snail trail slow. Some make you happy, some hunt like a shark. Some come unexpected like a bunk in the dark. Memories come and memories go. They dance in your head like your own disco. And all you remember. the squeaky tap, the hamster named Mr. Flapjack that bit your finger with a crack. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and, and then all the numbers up to ten. Robots, seashells, nights in your tent, ice cream sundaes, and letters sent. All the faces of your old friends. Oh, You remember now, so don't forget, your memories are safe and sound in your head. <laughs> but just as they were leaving, the butterfly spotted a box. It was sealed and worn and covered in moss. Does this belong to you? Is there something you forgot? Nothing. It's not mine. I swear it's not. Are you sure? It looks like yours. It looks very big and very important. But Gus shook his head like he wanted to ignore it. You don't have any secrets, do you? Asked the butterfly. 
Gus said nothing, but his silence told a lie. Because this won't work if you're holding something back. We have to hold on to all of our memories, even those that are bad. Because memories make us who we are. They are all we have. Even the ones that frighten us, Gus. Even the ones that make us sad. No secrets. No secrets. Promise. Making promises is weird and babyish. I don't... Fine. Promise. Where to next? Let's find out! Three, two, one! Is the magic place where dreams come to hide if you are ever thoughtless enough to leave them behind mm -hmm. lurking in the caves in the forests of your mind most dreams we find a treasure some <laughs> not so <clears throat> not so nice <laughs> This is a nightmare! Oh no! Run! It's the maggot man! Run! <laughs> he once worked in the graveyard. He buried down the dead. But here's now the nightmare swilling in your head. He carries a shovel. He spits when he talks. He hangs out with the zombies that in the night stalk. He terrified the children, so they made up a song to warn others about him just in case he should come. And he's learned all the words over the years. Now the maggot man knows the tune to all your fears. With a hunchback from his daily digging, the dead of the night, you can hear him singing. Here he comes, the maggot man, with eyes like lice and a nice sharp fangs. He wriggles and he jiggles like spaghetti in a pan, into your ear hole to steal all your plans. Cover up the windows, entering the locks. Tick-tock, tick-tock, jump, jump, jump! <laughs> Digging in the dead of the night, you can hear him singing. Here he comes, the maggot man, yeah. with a grin on his face and a tongue like sand. He slithers and he slobbers like worms in a can. Beware, beware the maggot man! Clamber up the windows, entering the locks. Tick tock, tick tock, chop chop chop. Can you outrun <laughs> the maggot man? He has taken the 
spades on his feet and rakes on his hands. He summons up the goblins of us dead from the land. Run for your life from the maggot man. If that's the kind of dream you've come to look for, then I don't want to do it. Anyway, the maggot man's a nightmare, not a dream. Dreams are supposed to be nice. And he isn't. Not one bit. The butterfly, exhausted, fluttered around Gus, her wings sparkling, twinkles in the night air like dust. But there are lots of other dreams too, dreams I think might belong to you, of things you've always wanted to do. Be an artist, see the moon, do the world's biggest poo! That one's not mine. There's a dream about a bed made of jam roly-poly, an electric guitar, a vampire pony, a wall made of fresh pickable bogies. <laughs> and then there's this other dream, sitting here, all lonely. I would ask you what it is, but I don't think you'd show me. And I can't get near enough to see it closely. That's enough. Let's move on. I've got enough of my dreams back. I don't want to see any more. But this dream looks special. Something precious inside. A dream I don't think we should leave behind. We could open it up. See what we find? You might see a face in there, Gus. You might quite like. No, I told you, leave it alone. Okay, it's your head. <laughs> Around every corner is a second bend. Messages stored up from bottled up friends. Uh, whoopsie daisy. Am I making sense? <laughs> the clock's ticking backwards. My Swedish again. <laughs> My hair is a hedgehog. My nose is a screw. Is there a vet in the auditorium? My pet fly has flu. My eyes are cookies. That's why my belly grew. Is this where imagination is? I really don't have a clue. I don't need no boring imagination. Everybody needs their imagination. Duh! That's what comics are for. That's what computer games are for. That's what horror films are for. Yeah, well, that's what you think. But imagine a world without a place to think. Everything you know would vanish in a blink and swirl like mouthwash down the kitchen sink. Sure, we need seeds to begin. Fantastic initialization. I made up that word. It's copywritten as of right now. 
But to dream webs with seams of inspiration, but the wonder without the reincarnation? No. This is what it would feel like without your imagination. This friend inside my head I thought was just like me. This little friend would dare me things and say, Hey, let's be crazy. I try to shrug off the little bug, drown out its titchy voice, but it would just shout louder then. You really don't have a choice. We're going to be quite wild today. We're going to be quite stupid. We're going to get into naughty tricks, then act like we didn't do it. Come on, come on, let's have some fun. Let's bend the rules and tromp along the silly streets like we belong. Come on, come on, come on. My imagination. My imagination saves me time. When I queue up, it queues with me. It whips me off from standing in lines and screams. Hey, queuing's so boring. Let's pretend we're pigeons today. No, let's pretend we're goats. <laughs> let's pretend we're superheroes and have 400 toes. One, 67, 279, 300. Oh. Let's pretend we own the world. Imagine we were free. So close your eyes and count to 12, then run along with me. Come on, come on. Let's have some fun. Let's bend the rules and tromp along the silly streets like we belong. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on, come on. But what's that still small voice? That strange thump in the night that moves all your toys about after you've said good night, that twitches the curtain and then creeps up the stairs that moves in slow motion and spikes up your arm hairs. Is it really there? Or is it your own creation? Who can tell once you've shared a thought with your imagination? But. Come on, come on, let's have some fun. Let's bend the rules and tromp along the city streets like we belong. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, let's have some fun. Let's bend the rules and tromp along the city streets like we belong. Come on, come on, come on. Gus and his butterfly were delighted with their catch. All of Gus's emotions were safe and ready to take back. Uh, just one more thing I have to ask before this task is through. You don't have any secrets hidden, Gus, now do you? Gus had a think, 
and then shook his head. There was that time he stole those crumpets and a loaf of stale bread, or the time he redecorated his neighbor's shed with a box of rotten eggs. But these weren't really secrets. He always got caught in the end. No. No secrets. And Gus shook his head again. Is a dead end, the butterfly cried as she fell away. <laughs> I keep trying to push through, but there is no way. What do you mean a dead end? There's something in the way. In the way? In the way of what? Butterfly was right. They had reached a dead end. A wall from the floor right up to the sky made of thick cement. Are you sure you have no secrets, Gus? Nothing you're clinging on to? Nothing you need to open up and take back home with you? No! I told you! Then I don't get it. It's all very weird. Are you sure you're not holding on to one of your fears? I know it's hard, and it won't just disappear. But you must have a reason behind all those tears. What tears? I don't. Butterfly, I swear I don't. OK, I trust you. And so I'll do my best to get us out of this terrible dead end. But you must promise me to never again do something stupid to your precious head. I promise. butterfly twitched, her wings an ash grey, injured and crooked and fraying away. She slumped to the ground, panting on the floor. I'm sorry, Gus. I can do no more. Huh? I can't do all the hard work for you, Gus. I can't help you if you don't help yourself. But... But wait! Butterfly? Butterfly! Please come back, Butterfly! Please! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And Gus could do nothing, only sit by her side as the beautiful butterfly of his brain cells died. And she slipped away and stole into the night. And Gus felt the guilt, for he had told a lie. Gus did have a secret. His butterfly was right. Imprisoned in a locked box that he daren't go inside. It lay in the pit of his belly, but 
From time to time, it struck his heart, wild, clanged his bones with a chime. But he didn't want to see it. He didn't want it to show. It was his secret for the keeping. And he couldn't let it go. He didn't want to remember because then the pain would grow. And where would his secret live then? Where would that pain go? I want to come and get you, but I think I'm too scared. I've blocked you out for so long that I forget you're in my head. And the idea of you will become the real truth instead. To remind me that you're not here, Mum. To remind me that you're... I can't do it. I just want to go home. And Gus woke up, back in his sad little room, troubled by the greyness of the endless gloom. He didn't know what was what, or who was whom. Only that his butterfly had left his heart too soon. Gus read more comics, watched the day fade to black, room cooped, slurped soup, flat out on his back, the whole summer holidays like a pacing tiger, trapped. His heart hung heavy in its cage, like an old potato sack. <laughs> the wallpaper has eyes. The stillness swarms, the slits in the blind sneak stills of a storm. Gus snuck out of bed where it was cosy and warm, because inside his head an idea had spawned. Get back to bed, you. You're meant to be resting. You heard what the doctor said? I'm sorry that I'm naughty and I don't always listen, okay? That I went and leaned back too far that stupid day. But now I've learnt my lesson and it's me who has to pay. I know that it's happened. I know what's done is done. I know that I'm an idiot and I'm messed up. I know you only tell me off because it's me you love. I'm ready to hear about mum. You were so scared that day, Gus. You were just a child. He ran away from the funeral and out into the wild and the grave digger found you and gave you a smile and he said, She's not gone, little one. She's just sleeping for a while. But you were so terrified. You said he looked like a slug. You said his eyes were crawling towards you like black bugs. And his teeth were shrouded in mud, and so were his gums. You called him the Maggot Man, and then shouted, run! You ran away from everything. You were scared of everyone. But really, you were running away from the fear of losing mum. Even as 
a woman, she had the soul of a girl, as weightless as a feather, as light as snow fell. She was roaring with color, but gentle too. She always knew what to say and exactly what to do. She wore her heart on her sleeve, but you were cocooned. And when she died, I think she snuck inside you. How to describe her, people could try. For she was free as a song, impossible to define. But she was like anything, captured in time. I'd say your mother, well, she would be a butterfly. She's hidden in the numbers on your birthday cake, in the flicker of a candle, in the untamed flame. You'll find her at the window, whispering your name. In the mirror, she smiles at you through the look on your face. You'll find her in the garden, in the green grass, then she tiptoes on the edge of the water in your glass. She flutters all around you and lands where you are and watches you growing from her throne up in the stars. Sometimes it seems like she's gone and that sounds like it's hard. But someone who loves you never goes far. The love never leaves you. Once you've known it from the start, the love never leaves you. Once you've known it in your heart, the love never leaves you. Once you've known it from the start, the love never leaves you once you've known it in your heart. The love never leaves you once you've known it from the start. The love never leaves you. 